This week we've got a little bit of a different video. I'm going to be showing you how I did the cloning effect in my ice bucket challenge video. So let's take a look at the footage to see what we're going to be making. Ice bucket challenge. Thanks for the donations, Walker, Marcus, Thomas, TJ, and Grace. I donated to ALS and some other charities because they need our help too. Let's do this. <laughs> I nominate Jasper Egbertani, Ian Cade, and Stephen Butters. So just like with most visual effects, the key is to make sure that you shoot smart. Just making a couple of extra precautions when you're on set will save you loads of times when it comes to editing. So in this case, I made sure that we got a clean plate which is just an empty background, which is very useful for a lot of VFX shots, particularly cloning effects. And then while the camera is still rolling, I went forward and I pretended to throw an empty bucket of water at the space where I knew that I would be sitting in the next shot. So I just threw an empty bucket and that will be the clone character. That's what I'm gonna call it clone so that we know the difference. So then straight after that, before the lighting changed, I went over to the center of the frame and I had an actual bucket of ice chucked over me and then I also had a second one, which my dad threw over me. And this one, I made sure that he was standing as close to where I was standing when I threw the empty bucket. The idea being that they would line up as closely as possible. So the next thing to do was to duplicate the layers three times, because I did that all in one continuous take, so that we could be as quick as possible without the lighting changing. And that's very important. So I found the point where the clone threw the empty bucket, and then I lined that up with the point where my dad threw the real bucket. And then I also moved the bottom layer so that I could have a clean plate throughout the whole of my shot. And the next thing to do was to drop the opacity on the top layer so I could really see the timings, so I could really match up my bucket with the bucket that my dad threw. The idea being that then the timings would line up perfectly, or at least as close to it as possible. And then also now is probably a good time to name your layers because it's really good to have the organization of your clean plate. And then I'm calling the center one Simon because that's what the layer that's got me on it and then there's the clone layer which is the second version of me so that way i know really clearly which layer is which and especially with these cloning effects where a lot of the layers look very similar it's really important to label them and keep everything organized so the next thing to do was to draw a mask around the simon layer which has me in the center so that i could then remove my dad from that shot the idea being that the thing that would show through would be the clean plate so all you'd see was me, just like demonstrated here. And then I turned on keyframing for the mask path so I could make sure that I included everything inside that mask that was supposed to be there, which in this case was the water and myself. So I had to animate the mask so that it included the water and then shrank down to the point where it just had me in it once the water was gone. And then of course I made sure to give plenty of feathering to that mask because otherwise the seam will probably be visible because the lighting isn't completely constant. So now if I turn back on the clean plate, you can see that it does merge pretty well to the point where you can't really tell that I've done anything different. But the thing that you will notice is that when I play the full footage, the water just comes out of thin air rather than coming from the bucket that my dad threw. So that's the first step was to remove my dad from the shot because then we can build on that to add the clone back in. So you can see that the water comes in from the side of the mask and I'll just turn off that mask so you can see what it looked like before and after. So here is my dad in the shot and then after I've cut him out using that mask. So the next thing to do was to enable the clone layer and then in this case I've just drawn a quick garbage mask although for the real thing I did actually rotoscope it much more carefully but you can get the general idea that I just drew around the clone so that I could then, so that would then show through the previous footage. Now we have a someone throwing an empty bucket which doesn't appear to have any water coming from it but then it does actually hit the original clone although it's obvious that we've got some more work to do at this stage. So now I'm going to switch over to the actual comp which has my much more refined version of the masks but otherwise it's very similar. The main difference being that I actually went through with the roto brush and made sure that I'd been more careful with the roto on the clone layer. The idea being that I could then put the water behind the bucket a lot more easily and there wouldn't be any problems with seams on the masks. So you can see here that I've now actually added some more water which was simply taken from the original layer where my dad threw the bucket 
I just masked around that and went frame by frame trying to make it look as if the water came from the clone's bucket and then merged nicely in with the water that had appeared from the side of that mask. So the water that actually hit me was from my dad's bucket, but then I also masked around the water from that bucket and moved it over to the clone's layer and you know added plenty of motion blur and just kind of messed around with it, duplicating layers and changing the opacity until I had something that looked fairly realistic. Now this is probably the weak point of this, but I think it looked okay considering it all happens very quickly. I don't think anyone's really gonna notice unless they go through it frame by frame. And then once the bucket has been thrown, it goes back to a much simpler mask, which is just like a four point mask. The idea being that I would only use Roto when I actually, when I needed to. And all I did was split the layer and then delete the mask for that one and add a new mask, which was a lot simpler. So now if I turn on that clean plate, then you can see that at the various points, I can take away any of the elements and it still looks fairly okay without there being any visible seams. Now here's what it looked like with my dad. And then if I add myself back in, and then get rid of my dad, then you can see how the different buckets kind of work together. And then if I add the water in, then you really do see that it did kind of work out. Although obviously, if, like I said, if you watch it frame by frame, it is a little bit problematic. But the key here is just to have, get your layers in the right order, mask out stuff in the right place, and then just make sure you've got the footage in the first place and you'll pretty much be fine. Okay, so that's it for this week. I don't think I'll be doing many more tutorials like this in the near future, but of course, if this is something that you really like, then do let me know in the comments. But I think I'll just go back to the regular episodes that you'll be used to for next week. But the reason I did this is because a lot of you were asking in the comments. And if you'd like to see my full ice bucket challenge, then please do look in the description of this video. I have a link because, you know, the ice bucket challenge, although it gets a lot of bad rep, it is still promoting giving to charity. If you don't agree with the whole thing of wasting water or this kind of viral marketing idea, that's fine. But I still think that donating to charity is a worthwhile thing to do. So yeah, that's it for this week, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.